In today's episode of Master Hacks, we're getting strategic. Hello, my name is Patrick, and I'm a solutions advisor here at ShareGate. In the previous episode, we looked at planning. If you've made it through that, congratulations, you're halfway there. But now comes the good stuff. The hacks to make your migration run like a well-oiled machine. We're talking teamwork, strategy, and some tips to keep your migration on track without pulling your hair out. And to help you even more, check out our Microsoft 365 Tenant to Tenant Migration Playbook. It's packed with insights and best practices that will guide you through every step of the process. Okay, let's dive in. First things first in your migration strategy, get your key players involved. Start by establishing a migration committee. It'll be important to determine the purpose of the committee itself, as well as identifying the key players. Are they business leaders, department heads, IT experts? You'll also want to assign the right responsibility to the right member and appoint a champion per department, category, or site collection, specifically depending on your structure. The whole point of this is to be able to obtain context as needed and to have the right resource available at the right time. Having someone to refer to when determining if some content should or shouldn't be migrated and what to do in cases where something needs to be rebuilt is crucial, especially considering that you, as an IT admin or whatever your role might be, likely don't know the context of every site just by looking at it. Now that you have your Avengers assembled, the next step is executing your strategy. In the first episode, we set up a solid migration plan, making sure you have clear goals, a full inventory, and an understanding of your priorities. Now let's move on to actually executing the strategy. Here's a few essential tactics that'll help the process run smoothly. First, schedule your migrations outside of peak hours or on weekends if possible. This way you minimize interruptions to the daily workflow and have a bit of extra time to handle any unexpected issues without impacting your productivity. Then prioritize your workloads. Start by migrating the high impact items, the things that people rely on the most day to day. Once those are over, you can move on to the lower priority items without slowing anyone down. Next, set a clear cutover date, the moment where everyone stops using the old environment and fully moves on to the new. This is especially important if you're migrating in stages. Also, make sure to leverage the champions you previously appointed. In addition to helping out during the migration process, they will also help lead the way into the new environments, making it easier for their teams to adapt to the new tools and processes. Champions are great for spreading knowledge, encouraging early adoption, and providing support to colleagues who might need a little extra help. And finally, an essential part of your strategy is to create an effective communication plan. Make sure everyone knows what to expect when the changes will happen and how they'll be supported through the transition. Regular updates, clear instructions, and open channels for questions make all the difference. Now, let's get our hands dirty. You don't want to bring over any unnecessary stuff in your new environment, right? So here's the game plan. Here at Shagate, we call this strategy remove, migrate, or rebuild. First, remove anything that's dead weight. Old team no one uses, gone. Orphaned accounts, adios. One of the first things you can do to determine what needs to be removed or simply omitted from the migration process is to determine if you have any old site collections that are no longer in use. With Shagate Migrate, you can simply run the unused site report, where the default filter will show you all site collections that have not been modified or that do not have any content within that has been modified in the last six months. Of course, like all or most reports in Shagate Migrate, you can modify this to your liking as you wish. Alternatively, you could run a site report and simply filter with the last modified date column. This will also give you more information and context on the sites themselves, like their total size or the list of their site owners. Next, migrate the stuff that matters. Just make sure that your permissions are properly mapped so that everyone's got the right access they need. Permissions in SharePoint are incredibly important. In order to make sure that all permissions are properly recreated during a migration between two different environments, you can use ShareGate Migrate to simply map your source users to the appropriate destination ones. In this example, I have a copy structure operation where both the source and destination have already been defined. I can click the Mappings button at the top right to bring up the mapping screen. From here, I can search for my source users on the left-hand side. Note that this will bring up 
AD groups, as well as SharePoint groups. But for this example, I'm looking for this user specifically. I can drag into the center under the source column. For the destination, I can do the same thing. In this case, I'm going to choose James Johnson. What this means is if any permissions are found at the source belonging to Patrick's support test user, they will be recreated with James Johnson at the destination instead as per this mapping. You can also set up a mapping for your unresolved users or groups automatically. So if you have any unresolved users, they don't get left behind and they get to be added for a specific account. I chose Mary Smith here as an example. It could easily be a system account or an account that would help you to determine that this user was previously an unresolved user. Note that this is doable through the UI. You can import or export your mappings and reuse them in multiple operations. You can also do all of this in PowerShell like most things in ShareGit Migrate. And finally, rebuild where it makes sense. Maybe some of your SharePoint sites could use a refresh or you want to set up provisioning templates for teams and sites to keep things organized. For example, if you're coming over from Google and some of your shared drives are orphaned or its users are no longer active on the source, this is a great time to fix that. What you can do is build a new library on the destination, give access to the right people, and move the content over to this library directly. This way, you can restore proper access to everyone that needs it. You shouldn't wait until the end to think about optimization. If you consider it at every step of the process, you end up with a much better result, whether it's cleaning up old data, rebuilding classic elements in modern environments, implementing governance practices, or tidying up your permissions to prepare for Copilot or other AI adoption. You'll have a much easier time if you consider all of this as you move through your project instead of after the migration. Let's recap. Get your key players in place. Business leads, department heads, IT pros, or anyone you need for your specific context. Set up solid tactics to keep the business running smoothly during the migration process. And don't wait till the end to think about optimization. Consider it at every stage of your project to ensure the best result. Clean house, remove what you don't need, migrate the important stuff, and don't forget those permissions, and rebuild where it makes sense. Keep governance tight and start prepping for AI like Copilot if you plan to enable it. There you have it. In the next episode, we're tackling roadblocks like downtime, throttling, and giving you the tools you need to meet those tight deadlines. Be sure to subscribe and tap that notification bell so you don't miss it.